Constellation Episode 7 was perhaps the most confusing of the entire season, showing two different universes back and forth, characters switching consciousness all of a sudden, dead female cosmonauts appearing in dreams, Schrodinger's cat making appearances both alive and dead at the same time, and Alice's in Cabin Land seeing each other through the looking glass. Most of the episode was confusing, but it also cleared a lot of stuff for me. The paintings and the cats have been showing us the liminal space, the third universe that some people have been theorizing about, a space where objects from the two other universes cannot decide which state they should be in. Hence, we keep seeing the third cabin, neither burned down nor in a good state, and the paintings with mixed characters. In this video, I'll try to explain everything as much as possible and tell you my theories. I also have certain questions I don't have answers to, I'm gonna need your help on those. Let's start, shall we? The Paintings and Liminal Space Throughout the first six episodes, we saw the different versions of the paintings in the cabin and episode 7 even showed more. But now, it's clear how many versions are there. Let me explain. In Universe A, or the Blue Universe, whatever you call it, the universe we've been watching, Joe in, there are two paintings. One is on the wall, straight ahead as you go into the house. It's the changeling stirring a pot by the fire. The other painting is on the right, next to the staircase. That's the wounded angel on a stretcher. In Universe B, or the Red Universe where Paul is alive, the paintings are the same, but their places are switched. Does that make sense? Now, in the third cabin that we've been seeing, the paintings are mixed. Certain aspects of them have changed into each other. In this episode, when Blue Alice goes into the third cabin, she sees a mixed painting across the door. It was the angel without the stretcher and the two children carrying it. And on the right side of the house, it was the changeling on a stretcher. For the Red Alice, the paintings were swished as well. When the Red Alice is looking for her mama in the cabin, she sees the changeling on a stretcher right across the door, and the wounded angel without the stretcher to the right side of the walls. I know it's confusing, but the changing state of the paintings in the third cabin shows us that this is a liminal space, an in-between place where things can be white, black, or both black and white as Henry was explaining to Alice in a previous episode. This cabin is a quantum superposition of both cabins from the red and blue universes. It's not exactly burned down like the cabin from the blue universe, nor it is totally fine like the cabin from the red universe. The cats also play into that. One of the Alice's saw a dead cat when she entered this cabin. The other one saw that the cat was alive. When Jo arrived at the cabin, she saw both cats, one alive and one dead. Just like Schrodinger's cat experiment, where a cat is put in a box with something that can eventually kill it, but you don't really know whether the cat is alive or dead until you open the box. That's why it's a liminal space and I'd like to call the cabin Schrodinger's cabin as well, since both things try to exist there at the same time, like the two Alice's, the paintings, and the cats. You think you It did? wasn't a dream! I felt it! Communication between realities one thing that is interesting to explore is how these characters can communicate with their corresponding versions in the other universes. I think various conditions allow them to observe and communicate. One of them is through The Looking Glass, the title of the episode, and also a nod to Alice in Wonderland. I mean, a mirror or a reflection, which helps them communicate and see each other. We saw this with Alice's, who saw each other through the mirror in the wardrobe they hid in. We saw this in the previous episodes with Henry and Bud as they spoke through the mirror. Reflections also do the trick. There's a quick shot of Bud watching Henry through reflection on a window in episode 1. Alice sees the other Alice stomping on a rabbit on a puddle where there's a reflection. In this episode, the red Alice saw the other Alice going into the wardrobe through the window. So mirrors and reflective surfaces like windows and puddles appear to allow observation and communication to a certain extent in between universes. Another condition that allows this is to be in a liminal space, like far into the lake, for example. If you remember the conspiracy siblings, they said that you need to be out on the water to be able to hear in between realities. The barrier between universes is thinner in liminal spaces, which is why the frozen lake allowed Henry to cross into Bud's world. I will explain Henry and Bud's switch of consciousness in a minute, but I wanted to point out the fact that I think the frozen lake being a liminal space was also the reason why Magnus was able to see Joe there. 
Finally, for someone to physically interact with the other reality, their other version should be dead or close to being dead. That's why the red Alice was able to be physically near Joe when the blue Alice was not breathing. That's also why Alice's and Henry and Bud can only communicate through reflections because both of their counterparts from the other realities are still alive. Whereas Joe and Paul can physically interact with the other realities because their other versions are dead. Joe could physically see Paul in the graveyard and vice versa. Right now, I'm not sure if being near the Cal device also has an effect on communication between the two universes or whether it's just an observer. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Henry and Bud I explained what happened to these two in my previous video, but let me go over it in case you haven't watched it. Both universes had the Apollo 18 mission. Bud Caldera was actually an astronaut in the Blue Universe. When an accident happened in space, he was able to save his crew. He was basically a hero. In the Red Universe, Henry Caldera blacked out and couldn't manage to save his crew, and they died. But a switch between Henry and Bud happened, where Henry switched to the Blue Universe, where he was deemed a hero because he had supposedly saved his crew. And Bud ended up in the Red Universe as a drunk loser who now hates Henry because he lives the life Bud was supposed to live. They are both aware of this switch and have been talking to each other through mirrors and reflections like that computer scene at the office. But something different happened in episode 7. While Henry was on the lake and Bud was dealing with Paul, they swapped consciousness again. They returned back to their original universes. That's why Henry didn't recognize the fact that he was holding Alice in his arms or why he felt cold and thought that he was only wearing his underwear. It's also why Bud didn't know his address and called himself Henry. Paul? It's Henry. Oh. I'm not sure what triggered this switch. Was it being on a lake, a liminal space, and being near the Cal device? Or was there something else at play here? Tell me your theories for sure. The time difference. There's also a matter of time being different in two universes. It looks like the year is 2023 in universe B, the red car one. You can see this during Paul's deposition on the screen. There's no Cal device there and the date is seen. But in universe A, the blue car one, the year is 2021. This could be seen during Joe's deposition. This would explain why Paul thought his daughter Wendy was nine years old. She was nine in the universe Paul came from, but Alice revealed in the same episode that she was almost 11. So there is indeed a two year gap between universes. This should also explain why time moves differently in the two. In episode one, Joe's clock sped up so fast, if you remember, but in episode six, Paul's clock was quite slow. Either there's a continuity error with all of these, or the time difference is correct. Final remarks. To be honest, I cannot help but feel like there are more universes, maybe infinite timelines, as details between scenes change so much. When Paul arrived at Bud's apartment in episode 6, the time on his car was almost 11pm. But Bud's phone in this episode showed 9.06. Either this is an error which would be fucked up for a show of this caliber, or there are different buds and universes and there's not enough evidence to make out a decent theory. As for Alice seeing Valia, I think that was a dream. Perhaps dreams are another way to communicate with other universes, I don't know. What did you think of Valia's appearance? What will happen in the final episode? I cannot wait to read your comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you soon.